Uh, my colleague uh, Claudia Trentini cannot be here. I apologize. The reason is very simple. We are the we work at the UN, the UN uh, Economic Commission for Europe, that is based in Geneva in Switzerland, and we are one part of the UN system that is going through an era of spending cuts. So we didn't get any support for our travel here. And I apologize that uh, only one of us could come. Uh, of course, at uh, the outset, thanks to the organizers and thanks to the sponsors for this uh, conference that uh, I think came at the right time. And uh, let me say something about um, our paper. Perhaps I should say something about technology first. I don't trust modern technology. <laughs> So I had a bad feeling about uh, coming here with a memory stick and I sent my presentation to Eli a few weeks ago. But I also sent him the paper on which the presentation is based. And this here is the paper, not the presentation. And it's about uh, 60 pages long, so I won't, <laughs> I won't talk about it. I won't walk you through it. If you want to get a paper, it is available on the internet. You just uh, and the UNEC discussion papers, and you will see immediately that there, are, there is this paper by myself and Claudia. Now, um, a few points. The first point is this. Someone said that um, if you have no data, you can have no progress. And this is really true of the situation of uh, the Romani minority in Europe. So Claudia and I uh, looked for the data and we found some data for three countries, Bulgaria, Hungary and Romania, three member states of the European Union situated in central and southeastern Europe. And basically what I want to tell you about the Roma is what they say of themselves. We found um, so-called uh, generation and gender surveys that are produced by a number of national statistical agencies. These are comprehensive surveys. You have a sample of 10,000 people per country. It should be representative for the whole country. And some countries provide uh, information based on ethnicity, so they ask the respondents who are interviewed personally, what is your ethnicity? This gives us uh, a huge amount of information. And uh, when we uh, looked at the results, um, we were surprised a bit. What did we find? Well, the first surveys were done in the mid-2000s, around 2005. The second round was done three years later. The third round, another three years later. And basically, you have the same panel, the same respondents who are being asked a lot of questions later and later. So we only have the first surveys available now. And they are available free of charge, and you can find out in the paper where you get the information. So it's like having a snapshot. In a few years, we will have a motion picture, because we will see how the responses change over time. Uh, there are huge achievement gaps in education. But what happened is that uh, the education of the young Roma, or young Roma adults, say the age group 25 to 34 years old, people who are the prime. Their education actually improved a lot compared to the generation of their parents. So when we look at the information they provided, on average they have more education than their parents. But the majority population when we look at them, they have improved much faster. So the gap is growing 
even though the education of the Roma has improved. We also looked at the situation of some other minorities, say the Turkish minority in Bulgaria, the Romanian, uh, the Hungarian minority in Romania. And we discovered that there are some similarities say, between the Turks in Bulgaria and the Roma, but the Roma are doing worse than anybody else. And even if they improve, because the others are improving faster, they are falling further behind. If you look at employment, you get the similar picture. But actually, it is worse. Because as we know, under communism, there was full employment. It was a crime to be unemployed. So of course, the regime found jobs for everybody, including Roma. Most of their jobs were in agriculture, mining, some in construction. After the collapse of communism, the unemployment came, economic restructuring came, and the industries which employed the Roma were hit the hardest. And the Roma were the ones who were laid off more than anybody else. Because a lot of animosity that was artificially suppressed came out. But when you look at the differences in employment, which is lower for Roma, and we look at both formal or legitimate employment as well as informal employment in the shadow economy, the employment uh, is lower, the wages or the incomes from employment are significantly lower. There is a big wage gap for both Roma men and Roma women. And uh, the education explains about one half of the gap. That led us to the conclusion that the other half is due to other factors. The most important is probably racial discrimination. Then we looked also into the social situation of the households. And again, Roma are at the bottom, clearly. So there, is, there are clear connections between poverty, education, employment. And uh, we looked at uh, the welfare systems. And clearly, the Roma minority receives per capita more welfare payments in cash as well as in kind, subsidized housing, etc. They receive more than the other population groups because they are poorer. They are less often employed. And when they are employed, they make a lot less money. This breeds resentment. So the majority population hates Roma more and more because they are perceived to be lazy and like people who take advantage of the welfare system that is financed by the majority. And the situation is getting uh, more and more unsustainable. And as we know, if something is unsustainable, it cannot last. And then you have this explosion of popular resentment, racist demonstrations, the police trying to protect the Romani, etc., etc. Now, one interesting question is the longer term perspective. All of these countries have a huge population aging problem. That means that their systems of social security will become increasingly unsustainable. But social security depends on employment. The more people who are employed in the legal or formal economy, the more people pay social security contributions, the more you have available for pensions health benefits, etc. Now, they would actually need the Romani population that has a higher birth rate, is much younger, and is growing rapidly. They would need this population to enter the labor force. And um, of course, people from the World Bank and the OECD and the European Union and the UN system, they have 
figure this out, they have done some studies, and we confirm the findings that it would be very beneficial to invest in the better education of the Roma, desegregate the school system. We have uh, come across some research from Hungary that shows that desegregation is very good, not only for the Roma, but also for the majority population. The performance improves for both groups. And then uh, implement the anti-discrimination legislation on the books, make sure that the Roma can get employed, etc. Question is, uh, if this is so great, I think somewhere, somewhere we quote a Hungarian researcher who estimates that uh, one Roma student who finishes high school is going to save the government about $100,000 over his lifetime. Because then he will have a chance to get employed, pay taxes, pay social security contribution, etc. If he is not allowed to finish his schooling, chances are he won't contribute. So the obvious question is, if this is so great, from the fiscal point of view, why are the governments not doing it? And I think there are two simple answers. One of them is the old-fashioned political arithmetic. In these countries, whether you like it or not, if you are perceived as a lover of Roma, you can just as well commit a political suicide. You have no chance in the elections. The second reason is the old-fashioned political cycle. In order to improve the education of the Roma and their employment and their living conditions, you need some upfront investment. But the benefits will come years later. The next election will come in one or two or three years. So obviously, if you do something that makes economic sense in the long run, you will be penalized at the polls. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>